scripture lesson is received from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. Otherwise known as a Good Samaritan. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And in reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and when he was attacked by robbers, they stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed on the other side. But the Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. And he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him to go and to do likewise. To go and to do likewise. To seek first the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Gracious Holy God, as we are gathered here today, we are here to hear your word and to apply your word to our lives. So Lord, open our ears and our hearts to hear what you have to say to us. And Lord, I just ask that you help me to use your words, not my own. And may your Holy Spirit work within us and convict us, and to transform us to be more like you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. During the season of Lent, often as a pastor, I encourage people to give up something in remembrance of Christ's sacrifice for us. But this, this season of Lent, I'm asking us to do something different. I'm asking us to give something, maybe out of the ordinary, than what we normally do. So therefore, the title of today's message is, Won't You Be My Neighbor? Now, what I'm going to do to get us started this morning is see how good your memory is. And some of you young folk won't even recognize the names that we're going to throw in front of you. But if you haven't seen these TV shows, maybe it might not be a bad idea to take a look at them. So let's talk about the first one. The Flintstones. Does anybody remember the neighbor, neighbor of the Flintstones? Barney and Rubble and the family. Absolutely. How about... Lucy and Ricky Ricardo. 
Yes. Fred and Ethel. Yes. And also, as we gather around the television set, much of us when we were younger, and still some today, this man come into our house, and he come in usually wearing a sweater and putting on his shoes, and he said to us, won't you be my neighbor? And who's that? Yes, Fred Rogers was an ordained Presbyterian pastor who shared apparently with the Presbyterian Board of Ordained Ministry of what it considered at the time and said, I want to be, or I feel called to be ordained, to go on television and to invite children to be my neighbor. And he was ordained to do that. And in his days on television, he taught us as children how to live and to maybe get a glimpse of understanding what life and death was like. Or maybe even hurt as one of our stuffed animals might lose its ear, you know, that was fallen off from getting used too much. And he would give us children assurance that the very same thing would not happen to us. But what he also did was he invited all of us, no matter where we were, to be his neighbor. And I think that's what Jesus is talking about today. Inviting those around us to be our neighbor. Now, I know I talk about loving God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength a lot, and I know I talk a lot about loving our neighbor as ourselves, but when it comes down to the greatest commandments, you can have all those commandments, do not steal, you know, do not covet your neighbor, but the reality is Jesus in the parable today says what it is to have eternal life, and that is to love the Lord your God, with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So I think if Mr. Rogers says your neighbor could be anybody, I think that understanding calls us all to understand everybody as our neighbor. Now today, as the gospel text unfold, it becomes very evident that the story of the Good Samaritan demonstrates how two different cultures can come together and one can be the neighbor of the other. First of all, the lawyer stood up and asked Jesus, what is it to have eternal life? And as I said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. When you love God, all of those other things come and pour from that. And then Jesus gives an example of what it is to be a neighbor. And here's what he says in this parable. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell into the hands of robbers in that rough area. In fact, nobody liked to travel that area because of the difficulty of rough people. So as he was on the journey, the robbers, they stripped him, and they beat him, and they simply walked away, leaving him half dead, laying along the road. So here comes a priest, and the priest himself walks right by. And then here comes a Levite, another priest, walks right by. And finally, the Samaritan. The one that doesn't get along with Jewish people. The Jewish people would look at a Samaritan and say, they are unclean. I'm not even going to find myself connected with him. But the Samaritan, as he recognizes this man as half dead, he takes wine and oil and bandages and fixes him up. Now, I know wine... You might think, it, well, if he drinks enough wine, surely he'd be feeling better. But in those days, actually, they used wine as a medicinal agent to wipe clean a wound and oil to do the same so that the skin would heal. So not only did he do that, but he also took the man 
to the innkeeper on his own personal donkey and said, here, I'm giving you money to take care of him. If there's any more, put it on my bill. He doesn't know him. But yet Jesus calls him his neighbor. Well, if we look at where we are going at telling our story and how all that fits into the church different book that I'm reading, it reminds us that everybody is our neighbor as we are called to share the gospel story with them. Everybody is our neighbor. We should care about them as much as we care about our own salvation. Now, how does all of this work, you might ask? How do we love our neighbor as ourselves? Well, one pastor um, in the book, The Church Different, recognized an entire neighborhood needed new roofs up on their homes. They were leaking, they were dilapidated. And so the church decided to go to them on a mission trip and fix their homes. Now, to make it easy, they simply could have went, done their service, went back home and witnessed everything that they did, saying, my life has been changed, we fixed the roof of an entire community, and wow, I feel pretty good about that. But, what God calls us to do is something more than that. And that is share the message of hope. The author talks about a man, a writer who witnessed in World War II, the Holocaust. And he says, I could tell by looking at those who were about to be taken into those showers of gas. He said, I could tell which ones were not going to make it out of there. He said it wasn't the weakest, it wasn't the most humble, it wasn't the most broken, but it was to those who lacked hope. Those were the ones that were not going to come out of there. And for the ones that have hope, they were going to be able to survive that. So what does that tell us about this community and this world that we might go and fix all of their roofs and just simply come home and feel good about it? It tells us without the message of hope, their house is going to fall in anyways. Without the hope of Jesus within that home to bind that family together in love, without that hope to help them understand one another and to love one another, that hope to get them through the difficult times when there wasn't enough food on the table. You see, we can give food on the table if we don't give hope, the message of Christ. We haven't done the fullness of God's message to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength and love our neighbor as ourselves because it's more than just doing. Yes, we know that faith without works is dead, but also works without faith being shared doesn't get you very far either, does it? Hope is what changes the world. And Jesus shares a story of somebody who was broken and along the road, beaten by robbers, everything was taken from his possession. And yet a Samaritan, somebody he would not normally connect with, brought him hope, brought him healing and wholeness. So this morning, as we look at Mr. Rogers, the one that invited all children and some adults into his television show, he shared with them ways in which we could bring hope into the world. And I'm going to ask you this morning, my friends, who exactly is your neighbor? And who is your neighbor that you have not connected with? Perhaps because you're very different. 
Maybe you're di different economic status, maybe you don't agree with what they're doing, but likely Jesus says through this parable is that those are the ones you need to connect with. And if you recall last week, I talked about us who are already on the discipleship journey, how we understand faith, just about, and in that we find hope, and in that we are perfected in love. And for that person who does not know yet Jesus, they need to know up front that they are loved, that they are cared for, and in that their hope is built, and faith in that develops. As likely was what happened today with the Good Samaritan and a gentleman laying beside the road. We can give everybody everything. We can try to save this world by doing. But yet, if we do not share the old, old story of Jesus and his love, of Jesus and hope, we've lost the fullness of the equation that Jesus lays out for us today. So won't you too, just like Mr. Rogers, invite others to be your neighbor? Let me tell you a story of how this might look in today's world. I'm going to try to use a different name, okay? So for protection of this person, but sometimes it slips, so forgive me. I'm going to call this guy Mitch. And I met Mitch one day after moving to Mount Union, and Mitch was walking his children to school. Now what I knew about Mitch and his story was this. Mitch loved his children, and Mitch cared enough to make sure that they got to school safely, so he walked them there every day. And as he walked there, I casually listened to a story. We would just simply talk about how the day was going. And then a day came when all of a sudden, I didn't see Mitch anymore. But I knew about where he lived. I knew that he lived in the low income housing development down the street, but I really did not know him personally. So what I did one day, I thought, okay, I'm gonna go track him down. And as I was there, after encountering, encountering many of his neighbors, finally one neighbor told me, I'd say, do you know, where, do you know, do you know Mitch? Do you know where Mitch is? I've seen him walking by with his children, but all of a sudden I'm not seeing him anymore. And that person said, well, did you read the newspaper? Did you read the newspaper? Now, many of us have no problem at all sharing what we read in the newspaper, right? Especially if it's an interesting story. So I come back and I Googled his name. Mitch was picked up by the police at that big drug bust that just happened at Mount Union. That's why I didn't see Mitch walk by anymore. After talking with him and his family while he was in prison, about telling him about Jesus, he already knew about Jesus. He was taught about that as a young child. In fact, his family went to church every Sunday. But yet Mitch found that it was easier to get money more quickly if he sold drugs. So where did that leave him? That meant when he was released from prison, he would no longer have a place to live. Because in federal housing, if you have a felony against your name, you can't live there anymore. So now, he and his wife are homeless. Furthermore, because he has a felony behind his name and also drug charges, that means it might be very difficult for him to find a job. 
And it will be difficult to find a job that paid as much as dealing drugs in a community. So what do you do with all of that? Well, I invited Mitch to church. And through that difficult time of transition, we invited him to be a part of his family. And his family became our family. And whenever I would see him, I'd say, Mitch, are you staying clean from drugs? Have you stopped dealing drugs? And he says, yes, Pastor. Even though it's easier to get money from dealing drugs, I'm working and I'm trying to provide for my family. It took a while to get him a job, but he finally got one. So what happened? He became a part of our church family and we, we held him accountable as he also became a part of our family and his children grew up to know who Jesus was. And yes, in that relationship between one another, his life, thanks be to God, was transformed as he became more like Christ and shared the message with other people. Mitch isn't the only one where that story occurred with, but I know other people who have had miracles in their lives when they gave up that stuff and learned what it was to serve and to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And today, if I encounter a person who's recovered from addiction and Jesus was the one that set them free, you have the best disciple there that you can possibly have because they are willing to go share the story with other people so that the world can be changed, so that the world can find healing and wholeness, so that Jesus can fill that space rather than other things. No amount of money, no amount of freedom, no amount of material possessions can fill that space as much as Jesus. And that is what Mitch learned. So this morning, my friends, as United Methodists, as I shared this in Sunday school, as United Methodists, we have the tendency to provide somebody with food, with the love of Christ, and pat their shoulder and send them on their way. Or we have the occasion to teach children Bible school, send them on their way after Bible school along with their parents without any other encounters. But we are missing the full equation when we don't do the sharing of our faith. You see, we could be any social organization. We could be the Lions Club, we could be the Red Cross, but what makes us different is we are the church. And part of that equation with the church is Jesus is the one that sets us free. It is Jesus that brings the healing. And if we miss that story of how Jesus connects with us, we haven't told the whole story. So if you want to go tell the story and tell the story of Jesus and his love, yes, do the works, but do it with faith as you invite others to share the story and as you invite others to be your neighbor. So I'm going to ask you this morning, will you be my neighbor? Will you walk with me as we care for our neighborhood, as we care for our city, and as we are missionaries to the entire world? Won't you be my neighbor? And won't you answer the call of Christ with me? Amen. Amen.